I'm gonna, I'm gonna save on that. Oh, okay. Oh, you're on. If you'd like to, though. No, it's fine. I just didn't see it over there, Ellen. Actually, it's a seven line prayer? Yeah, just at the bottom. I went green. Isn't green good? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay, we'll do the seven line prayer of Guru Rinpoche. Yeah. One time. Hongen Yugi Nam Cham Cham Pema Gesar Dong Pola Yasin Jogi Nam Dram Ni Pema Jong Ne Se Tu Drug Kor du kadro mang po kor ke ki je du dog dru ki chin zi lob tur se su so guru pema city home. And then the praise to Shakyamuni Buddha, teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, knower of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings and go for refuge, teacher, Foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings and go for refuge. When you, chief of humans, were born, you took seven steps on this great earth and you said, I am supreme in this world. To you who were wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the supreme marks, a face like the stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust. Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate protector, endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, feel devotion-like merits and good qualities, to the thus gone I prostrate. Through purity, free from attachment, through virtue, releases from the evil gone realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the Dharma that brings peace I prostrate. From freedom, teaching the path, well abiding in the pure trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the Sangha also I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage, to all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms in all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous action, accumulate virtue and goodness, subdue your own mind. This is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning, and clouds, look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of the all-seeing, and thereby subduing the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the guru, 
I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. By the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma, may I attain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all sentient beings be free of suffering and the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be inseparable from the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from holding some close and others distance. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of every type of offering, actual and imagined. I confess all my negative actions accumulated since the beginning of this time and rejoice in the virtuous actions of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhi teachers ripen, and may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make of a precious jeweled mandala, together with other pure offerings and wealth, and the virtues we have collected throughout the three times with our body, speech, and mind. Oh, my masters, my yadams, and the three precious jewels, I offer all to you with unwavering faith, accepting these out of your boundless compassion. Please send forth waves of your blessings. Iram Guru Ratna Mandala Kamnarati Yami. The Heart of the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. I prostrate to the Arya Triple Gem. Thus did I hear at one time, the Bhagavan was dwelling on massive vultures mountain on Raja Griya, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Ablo Kichivara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then, through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said this to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Ablo Kichivara, how should any son of the lineage train who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Ablo Kichavara said this to the Venerable Sharavadaputra. Sharaputra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly beholding those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Sharputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness, without characteristic, unproduced, unceased, stainless, not without stain, not deficient, not fulfilled. Sharputra, therefore, an emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object of touch, and no phenomena. There is no eye element, and so on, and up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance no extinction of ignorance, and so on, and up to including no aging and death, and no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wisdom, no attainment, and also no non-attainment. Sharputra, therefore, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear. Having completely passed beyond error, they reach the end point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment in the reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, 
the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra equal to the unequaled, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering should be known as the truth, since it is not false. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is declared Tayata, Gate, Gate, Paragate, Parasam Gate, Bodhi, so 20 more times silently. Tayata, gate, gate, paragate, parasam gate, bodhisoha. Charputra, the bodhisattva, mahasattva, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom like that. Then the Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commended the bodhisattva, mahasattva, Arya, Avlokiteshvara, saying, Well said, well said, son of the lineage. It is like that. It is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom just as you have indicated. Even the Tathagatas will rejoice. The Bhagavan having thus spoken, the Venerable Sharvataputra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Arya Avlokeshavara, those surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, azures, and Gandharvas, were overjoyed and highly praised that spoken by the Bhagavan. And the request to turn the wheel of Dharma to fulfill the needs of all beings at the various levels of understanding we request that you turn the wheel of Dharma, including the lesser, greater, common, and extraordinary approaches. Uh, yeah. How's uh, the sound? Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> Getting two thumbs on dark, yeah. Mm. So um, we're talking about uh, birth, the Donna, the link of birth. Um, we're kind of almost at the end. <laughs> so uh, I wonder if uh, everybody in the room would be willing to uh, be reborn again, have another birth, and have exactly the same life. How many, how many do you think? Yeah, exactly the same life. Yeah? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Really, just two? Just two? All right, team in the back. All right, Roberta's bring it up. Catch all. Okay. <clears throat> We have ended up studying the Dharma, so. <clears throat> However, um, if we had a different life, uh, and took birth, maybe we wouldn't be studying, right? I don't know. And we might even have a really horrible rebirth. Right. <clears throat> um, I'd like to think like right now we'd have a better rebirth, but um, I don't know. It'd be hard to, for me, it'd be hard to say I could have a better rebirth. But anyway, maybe I could have a worse rebirth. <laughs> so one way of looking at the Nadanas, the links of dependent origination is like, the Buddha's uh, 
going through the whole round to develop, help us develop pronunciation. <clears throat> like, um, I'm sure a few people in the room have occasionally thought, I wish I'd never been born. Or I'm in this mess because I got born. Or I wish I had a different family or something, right? Like, and maybe not totally suicidal, although that happens a lot too, but just like, I just wish I hadn't been born. It would have been so much easier not to even like do this number, right? That should be a show of hands too, like, right? Probably a lot. So that's definitely a big part of the nidanas, the Buddha is going, you know, actually, if you really don't want to be reborn, uh, or you want a better rebirth, you better understand how um, the system works. <clears throat> so it, it's very practical in that sense. You know, like we're giving advice to somebody, like, you know, if you don't want to go through a divorce or another divorce, don't get married again, right? I mean, Right, that it's just like that. Uh, <laughs> um, if you don't want to get another DUI, don't drink. That's a tougher one for some people. Really tough. Like, well, I don't really want another DUI, but you know. <clears throat> so it's on a very practical level, I would say practical, the Buddha is just laying it out like, um, if you don't want to suffer, then, you know, don't, um, you know, see, see how you got in this mess and do something differently. It's really serious. Right. Here's how it works. Um, particularly if you don't want to, you know, get old and sick. <clears throat> um, and go through death again. So don't be ignorant and in the same link, same chain, don't don't be reborn, right? <clears throat> um, I mean, I mean, really being old and sick is not fun. So um, not getting out of bed and being in hospice and that, you know, so it's very reasonable for, for people to say, I, I don't want to do this thing again. Um, I wonder, in, uh, like in Buddhism in America, if um, we, we have some ordained chaplains here, you know, whether you kind of go, well, I, this is hard. Um, I, I'm going to say something really compassionate right now. <laughs> and you say, don't get reborn. <laughs> so they, you, how do you think that would go over? <laughs> I don't know. Some people might go, you know what? You're right. Okay, good, good plan. Um, how do I make sure that happens? You know, um, but that's kind of one approach to working with the Madonnas is, oh, well, let's just go back through how you got to this mess. And, um, you know, you're, you're sick and you're unhappy. So uh, let's just run through the circle again like that. <clears throat> um, you know, probably in America right now and also in Asia, most of the time um, we're not giving that kind of compassionate advice, but that's um, compassionate advice in a sense. If you don't want to get a divorce, don't get married, right? Okay. <clears throat> we can think of a whole bunch of other things. Like, uh, if you don't want something to happen, don't do the cause, right? So a huge, a huge thing as eliminating the cause and the effect is gone. So that was the realization uh, that Chariputra had after asking what was the Buddha talking about. One of the new monks just said, I don't know, I, I'm brand new to this, but the Buddha just said something that 
uh, if there's a cause arising, then um, there's also going to be a dissolution. And that was that. I had an insight. So uh, it, it doesn't sound very compassionate to say when someone's ill or in hospice or last words like, hey, just um, don't take rebirth again. Usually we'd say, you know, um, have a good journey, right? Good. Um, uh, we wish a good rebirth for you, right? <clears throat> but uh, uh, the Buddha was very, this is a very direct teaching, uh, which is interpreted different ways, which I'll remind people different interpretations, but the Buddha was just saying, hey, if you really don't want this to happen again, yes? I'm oh, sorry, we're having a sound issue, so <clears throat> I'm going to reset it for a moment. If you... Okay. Somebody's letting you know. You don't have to like, you don't have to take rebirth, like um, everybody thinks, well, the compassionate thing to do is um, take rebirth and come back and have lions or a Dharma center, but um, you don't always have to. You could say, I, um, it's been great, but I'm not coming back. Uh, Peter's grinning, I, his mask is down a little bit so I can see like, hey, okay. Uh, would, would it be okay to to say I, I don't need you know to be reborn somewhere else? Is it okay? You know, not that we're being nihilistic and saying the mind is extinguished, but it's okay. You just you say, ah, oh, my mind stream's just gonna keep going into outer space. Would would that be okay? You don't have to go anywhere in particular. You could just say, you know, I mean, give me an open ticket. Will that be all right? You don't have to say, I want to go to this pure land, or I want to come back to Sacramento, or I don't want to come back to Sacramento, I want to come back to Pebble, Pebble Beach or something. <laughs> no one ever says, I want to come back to Detroit. No one says that. <laughs> so so the, I think the basic way of interpreting the dawn is the Buddha is trying to really just say, if you know, this, this is how the system works. If you want to stop the round of rebirth, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, all the factors that go into it. And here's how, you know. So in this, this approach, which is um, very much approach that, uh, uh, you know, Vajrayana starts with, um, it, it's not aimed at saying, you know, be a nice person, don't be grasping, and don't be stupid. You know, it's really going to, do you want to end up in jail again? You know, this is your fifth DUI, and um, you're going to San Quentin, and, you know. So it's like, here's what, birth, old age, sickness, and death. Do you really want that? You know, that's how it gets, how it works. Um, it's like so. <clears throat> I think he was a very effective teacher because a lot of people went, um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't want this anymore. You know, and that's quite legitimate. You know, we talk a lot about Mahayana compassion, but um, let's say you actually like know you're a jerk. So, um, which isn't anybody here except me or something, but you know, you go, I really don't, you know, I just don't want to, be a jerk anymore, so I'm not coming back. That that could be compassionate, right? I mean, honestly. So this very basic way of you want to get out of the round of rebirth. <clears throat> so uh, not taking rebirth, uh, you you don't all automatically have to say I, I have to come back to Sacramento or have to be a talk or I have to um, go to Somalia and help out or go to Rio Linda or something. You don't have to say that. You can just say, it's okay. Um, I've had a life and I'm just gonna, not gonna be a nuisance. So I'm, it's very powerful, right? That can be very compassionate. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> the other aspect, other way of looking at the 12 Nidanas um, is uh, one way that Stephen Goodman uh, and uh, other teachers have looked at it is this is a way of describing our existential situation. So, uh, and how maybe even each moment arises. <clears throat> uh, in um, the contemporary world, California, Eckhart Tolle world, you know, we a lot talk about the now, right? How long is the now? <laughs> I don't know, you know, it's like, be, so uh, in Buddhist Abhidharma, it, it is like incredibly short, you know, so um, that's why uh, it's kind of problematical to say, um, I just want to be in the now because what happens? Well, you're not in the same, are you in the same now? I don't know, right? So, um, um, Elizabeth Zeem and I will be presenting some um, Abhidharma material at some point, right? She's really put together a lot of um, wonderful graphics and um, material that will present on the TV screens, right? So, and um, try to present some accurate information and She'll probably say stuff and then I'll correct her. That's that's the way it works. You already know that, right? Oh, I thought you were the one that was speaking and I didn't feel this thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll work it out. I might like you to say a few things. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do love Abhidharma a lot, so I'm looking forward to it. And you know, Abhidharma's like, well, what exactly is the moment, right? So in Abhidharma, we look at like what it's actually we could say emotionally, I don't want to be born again and go through, you know, four years of Trump and <laughs> COVID all over again. Um, but, you know, what actually is a moment? What actually is birth? You know, is that a dharma? Is that a real thing? Is that something we can actually experience? So, uh, you know, when we're looking at the nature of mind and looking at the nature of reality and dharma, we can look at it from these different standpoints. <clears throat> um, but uh, the birth aspect um, is something we could say from one point of view is happening constantly. We're constantly finding ourselves in uh, a new situation. We're constantly giving birth to the next moment, aren't we? So uh, from that uh, standpoint of looking at the 12 Nidanas, it has a very um, almost Western existentialist uh, view, like um, we're, we're just, we're kind of just born into the moment, we're th like thrown into the world. Um, I wish I knew the French, who speaks French here? Anybody? Yeah, so you know, you're thrown into the world, according to Sartre, like you're just appearing. It's, it's a little bit um, like one of my favorite movies being John Malkovich. So we, we've fixed that. Uh, we, we have fixed it. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. I, I, Maybe this isn't, should this be closer? Maybe it's just like this. Is this better? Just curious. No, it, it's an on again, off again issue. So uh, yeah. it's uh, probably a mechanical issue. So. Oh, um, okay. I, I don't think yeah. so. I don't think that's going to fix the issue. Mm. Some people can hear and some people can't. So I, oh. I think I think it's a bigger issue that's a mechanical issue that um, okay. where, mm. you know, <clears throat> I think going forward as we are is probably the best solution. Okay. So. so, you know, maybe really it'd be so much 
uh, probably more useful to, to just, you know, like, like do this, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's uh, flowers. So at, uh, if people stay for a salon uh, training after lunch, oh, we're talking about flowers. We're not talking. Maybe just, do you get it? No. <clears throat> Would that be OK if that was the whole Dharma talk? Be all right. No, just... <clears throat> I've been to talks like that, you know. <clears throat> um, so there's the idea of looking at birth from the standpoint of what's happening like right now, how we're giving birth to the now, and it's a process. <clears throat> and the third way of looking at the 12 links is to actually look at um, interdependence and relativity itself. So examine uh, the Buddha's experience saying, you know, I, I found um, that things arise in dependence on each other. <clears throat> so that would be investigating uh, the nature of interdependent origination and reaching, investigating uh, nature of emptiness, investigating the mind realizing emptiness, right? We need the wisdom mind, don't we? So it eventually ends up, even though we're talking about the 12 links, it eventually ends up looking at uh, and generating this, uh, what we sometimes call an uh, wistful wisdom mind, right? Or primordial awareness, yeshe, or rigpa, something like that, right? How do we get from birth, old age, sickness, and death to Rigpa? Well, we, we see that um, uh, none of these links uh, exist by themselves. None, none exist by themselves. Um, uh, and uh, they exist through what means. So that means looking at nature of mind, right? <clears throat> Yeah, can't hear? No, we lost the sound in the ear. Like when I'm tapping? Then... Really low. So, yeah. Maybe, maybe a good way is to have um, a, like a stand. Why don't we get that stand there? And so it'll just, it'll be like this. Is that okay? No, I don't. I could use this, but maybe just there's a stand that Truco could get, so. You actually need the different microphone for the stand. I know, I was just gonna jerry-rig something, but we could use that. Can I use that microphone? Yeah. Okay, so I'll turn this off. How about that? That works? I'm wondering if it's working in virtual land. Well, it's working for Dirk. That's working in Pennsylvania. Or, I don't know, I think Dirk might be in the Akanishta pure land, so it's working there too. <laughs> you could be in there. Hey, are we transmitting to also the copper colored mountain, you know, or hopefully? <laughs> so now you can hear in, in the room. Okay. Yeah, it's better. It's gonna take me. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's okay having a little bit to the side, then people can see my face a little bit or look good camera. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I I would like students at Lineser to 
look at um, the uh, 12 links from at least those three perspectives. You know, kind of, well, the three perspectives would be uh, very concretely functioning, saying, I, I don't want to go through this again. I, I don't want to have old age, sickness, and death, and um, I want to, you know, really eliminate that. I don't want to have Duke again, so I, I'm going to disassemble uh, the whole structure. You know, the Buddha, the Pali text talks about, you know, the, the roof beam has been removed, right? Uh, the structure is really disassembled, and, um, uh, you know, then talking about the sense of nirvana as really blowing out the ignorance and the aggression and the grasping, you know, so there are lots of questions about where does someone who uh, has done this or achieved this go, and the Buddha would sometimes say, well, when, when a fire goes out, where does it go, right? When there's no more fuel, the fire goes out, but it doesn't go anywhere, does it? It's interesting, right? So if we make it fast, and then we open the fist, where did the fist go? Did it have to take rebirth somewhere? You go, I really miss my fist. You know, was that a problem, right? So we, we need to look at it from, it's important to look at things from renunciation point of view, actually. Um, uh, like, very seriously, like, well, what don't I want to do again? Or even in this life, what, what, what don't I want to do again? <clears throat> and then the second piece is to look at, um, you know, what are the structures of the skandhas, of the consciousness, of the um, ayatanas, the datus, uh, the 75 or 100 uh, dharmas? What's, what's the structure so that we're looking uh, very technically, very deeply into the nature of the 12 links or even just the nature birth. <clears throat> so that we don't just say um, it, it's a drag, you know, being stuck in misperceived self. I just want to realize nature mind. Somewhere in the middle is, uh, you know, talking about the skandhas, right? We're, we're talking about, well, what, how does this misperceived self come into being and, and, and what is it imputed, right? And do the skandhas actually exist? But is it worthwhile to talk about them relatively? Well, we're gonna say yes, for the most part. <clears throat> so that's why we have the Abhidharma Kosha and some Abhidharma Samachaya. So it is important to look at things technically, don't you think? Like, um, sometimes it's useful to say, you know, you need different meds or, you know, I know you're, you know, going through this, but why don't you change doctors or hospital systems, right? You just wouldn't say compassionately to somebody, don't get born again, right? <laughs> and if somebody's in hospice or having a lot of pain, you don't say, you know what, why don't you just realize nature mind, It'll be fine. You, Abhidharma, the, the middle ground, the plane in the structures, you know, is like, what, what can we do to um, loosen things up? And that's analysis, right? It means to loosen things up. So, you know, maybe you do need a better hospital bed or, um, you know, maybe the fact that you're taking 10 Norco a day makes a difference, right? <laughs> like that. That's Abhidharma style. Like, what, what are the details of what's going on? <clears throat> that's kind of like the middle one and then looking uh from the perspective of uh awareness or experience itself uh at the the structure of our world the structure of our experience the um the process as stephen goodman says uh you know we we need to see like who's doing this what, what's awareness and who's doing this what's the most fundamental structure um, that is pointed to in uh, meditative yogas and the imaginative yogas, right? 
So those those three areas like that. <clears throat> one one kind of way of looking at it that I haven't um, mentioned, but might as well just be complete. Um, the uh, uh, twelve links is sometimes interpreted in such a way that you know, kind of medically. So uh, in Abhidharma things and contemporary teachers, not as much now, but would you know actually say, well, this is how actual birth happens, you know, biologically and kind of spiritually, biologically piece like that, um, and try to you know a little bit maybe Kala Chakra style medicine and and how the different energies, white and red drops come together, things like that. Um, I don't know, you know, I, I don't I don't think that probably style well, which was kind of uh, big in Tibet or traditional societies probably isn't going to last. What do you think? You no know, kind of, you know, kind of pre pre scientific medical explanation. What do you think? Do you think that'll last? You think so? Okay. You know, um, Dalai Lama sometimes gets lots of questions, like you know, when I think he's not recently, but you know, at a certain point maybe it'll happen again like you know when when does birth actually take place and you know when when you know do we say it's a living being around issues of terminating the pregnancy and consciousness and things like that um you know so that that also comes under its own special way of looking at the 12 links like just what what's really happening here even biologically like that um and the 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 previous links that we talked about are mostly um describing like uh the fetus like you're not even born yet like everything up to birth is you're you're talking about the unborn child and then uh this birth and then there's nothing else to say <laughs> about reality until you're old sick and die you know <clears throat> um uh, my friend and colleague john travis however kind of jokes like um if you're lucky you get to get old sick and die right <laughs> you know you have enough time to practice if you're lucky you get old and then you get sick you know so you don't you know, you, you have a progression and you know what's happening to you rather than you just walk across Alhambra Boulevard and get hit by a truck, right? Do you ever think about that? I do a lot, like what, this is things, I used to talk with my friends at Naropa, even, I don't know, 30 years ago, like this kind of Abhidharma thing, right? But rebirthing, like you, you walk across the street or you have some abrupt death and your last words are, not nice um some people are very concerned like should your last con does your last consciousness determine you know then does that follow into the last one what do you think we could have a short discussion about that i mean your last thing you're screaming the f word or something and so what is that what will you does that cancel out going to sukhavati what what do you think happens So no one on Zoom can hear you if you don't use a microphone, so. Oh, do we have two mics? Yeah. <clears throat> so 12 links things just kind of, when those kind of discussions like what, you know, goes into Abhidharma things like how much does our preceding mind moment influence the next moment? It's a big thing, right? 
is it deterministic or is there room for change? What do you think? Um, I think what I said was I think it does affect the bar. I don't know what your mind is on a death. And I mean, are we preparing for this right now? You know, like our death so that we can go to uh, the next life and return so we can continue work as good as possible. So uh, I didn't hear it quite clearly, but you're saying, isn't that what we're working for? So we can have some influence in our next life. Yeah, we're studying, and so um, <clears throat> I, I think it does affect it. I don't know anything, so you tell me. Well, I'm I'm, I'm just going on uh, what I've read and been told. So um, there there is one way of talking, like yeah, it really makes a difference, you know, like uh, what's what's your thought, you know. On, carries over into Bardo. Um, frankly, from my side, I'm hoping that it's, a, you know, like it's seen in context, right? Because <laughs> I, I think it's really difficult. It, it's really difficult to be that aware that, or that lucky, right? Because let's say we're dying in our sleep and, you know, how many of us can control their dreams, right? So generally in Mahayana, and Vajrayana, we're, we're depending upon awareness in general and our bodhicitta in general. Um, you know, but maybe some people are so precise that they could say that, you know, like they could just rely on, you know, the preceding moment. There's I guess way... I'm, I'm, it's not... I mean, I think it's a, it's a cumulative. Yeah. Effect but also has an effect, like they're both happening at the same time, maybe. I don't know if I'm explaining my thought, but I think it has an effect, but also the training that we've done, whether that, and, you know, we can say, when we get to that point, mm -hmm. so ridiculous, I'll just keep speaking. No, yeah. your mind is in the right place. I, I yeah. don't really know that, but I, I don't think it's what? an absolute. Yeah. So a little bit of both. Uh, very difficult. I do see the hand in the back. So oh, um, uh, a practice uh, difficulty or practice interest is like, um, what what is uh, the influence of intentionality through the 12 links? What's, what's the influence of uh, intentionality, motivation, um, good wishes uh, on the nature of awareness, right? So uh, are, are they, do they have to be linked or uh, are they the same or are they totally different? So let's say you have a, a really insight into nature mind, nature into emptiness, um, profound, but um, You've got a lot of work to do on your motivation. Is that possible? Huh? I think so. Yeah. I mean, you could, you know, have, you know, some real insights. Um, but um, motivationally and karmically, you still uh, got a lot of work to do. I would say, in general, that's important to keep in mind. Yeah, we can, well, I just, had a real insight in nature of no self, insight in the, you know, uh, you know, nature of awareness itself. Um, so why am I still like struggling or acting like a jerk or, you know, why is it so hard still after that to be, you know, kind, right? Well, that's another discussion. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, like, why do people, you know, I mean, I get this question all the time from members of the Sangha, about members of the Sangha, now, <laughs> just like, 
that person's done a lot of practice, so why are they still acting like that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that. We'll get back to that. It's it's a big deal, right? You know, we ask that about um, teachers or sanghas or people that that have really bad problems, right? Like, wow, after all that, you're still like so. The Abhidharmist in the in the back. Ah, I have a question about the Bodhisattva vows and taking, not taking rebirth or taking rebirth. Okay. I, I feel committed to coming back to help out. <clears throat> so, you know, even the opportunity to not take rebirth just doesn't compute. <clears throat> We've all taken those vows. Um, the, the Bodhisattva vows doesn't mean you have to take rebirth. You, maybe some scholars can look up. Is there anything in the Bodhisattva 16 root vows and the blah blahs extra vows the like you must take rebirth i don't think so huh um not being a nuisance you know i mean <laughs> i think a good uh, inner practice for ourselves is the daily practice is um, what can I benefit by just not doing anything? Also, you know, we're usually thinking, what can I do? But what can I not do? Stop doing. You need to use the microphone, please. <clears throat> well, if, we, if we're not taking rebirth, mm. um, I, I'm confused also at the kind of law of what Elizabeth said. How are we um, helping others, you know, to, I don't know. Well, let's say in our next lifetime or this, we've, we've done just super great. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's pretend. The students, yeah. But, um, Let's say we just knew that uh, maybe like five years from now or something, um, we'd be driving in Midtown and, and then run over someone riding a bicycle because they weren't, um, you know, they don't have any lights on or anything, right? And let's say this person had the cure for stupidity in America. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, you know, you know, say you could say, I, I really, you know, uh, want to die early, or let's say in your next life, you know, you would hit the person on the bicycle who would have the cure for stupidity in America. And, um, you know, you say, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to opt out of rebirth for a while because, you know, just not being there is being helpful. So, so not taking rebirth is not the, uh, individual idea of um no <laughs> enlightenment for myself individual path it's not the same uh individual liberation is something we still practice in vajrayana right we're not we're not um you know we're not getting rid of individual liberation okay <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lam. Yeah. So I'm thinking about the bodhisattvas who um, have not taken rebirth. I mean, like, I don't know, is Manzushri manifest? Is Avalokiteshvara manifest in human form? 
you know, I don't know. Well, yeah, Dalai Lama, but the Bodhisattvas, they presumably not all are manifest in human form, and then the less they're still helping by sending emanations, by sending, you know, helping in whatever way that they right. can. So, but they're not human necessarily. Right, you don't have to be human, exactly. So we're, I, are we interpreting being reborn too narrowly? Yeah, we we could, and that would be very narrow to say rebirth, rebirth always has to be human, exactly, yeah, that's uh, a good yeah, point. Or yeah, or even outside of the six realms. Right. That's even too narrow of an interpretation uh. of rebirth. <clears throat> um, so outside of the six realms, outside of being a bodhisattva, what would rebirth look like? That's like a con. You know, yeah, yeah. That's I, like a con question. Yeah, you know, I, like, don't, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. you know, so. I mean, what would consciousness look like if it wasn't manifest? Uh, well, that's like, you know, a Zen koan question, which is a good koan, yeah. So I'll take that up later, but. Um, I'll take that under advisement. Yeah. But I, I do want to make the point, we don't have, you know, we, we don't have to take, uh, uh, conventional rebirth. Well, that was my question, and maybe I missed something, but <clears throat> I didn't realize that I had a choice in the matter. Yeah, you got a it's choice. It's like a revelation. Oh, good. Yeah. Is there like a check box, or how do you? How do you? I express think. Your yeah, choice? I'll get you the form. Yeah. Uh, I I think it's you know like. Uh, you know, I think it's important to do the first renunciation stage, like um, maybe it'd be better if I didn't, or, you know, that that I have a choice. So not just check the box, I'm coming back, yeah. But, um, uh, you know, just on kind of a personal moral level, I, I totally support it when people are in, in a lot of pain or they just didn't have a good life and they say, I don't, I don't want to be back again. So I, I, that's fine. But, I mean, that would seem to presume that the next life is going to be the same. There might not be a next life. Right, but I mean, to make that choice, one would have to make some projection of what the next life was going to be like. And I would hope, I mean, I would hope mine would be a little more beneficial given the practice that I've done. Not to say it'd be worthy of checking the yes box. Mm -hmm. But I'm mm -hmm. interested in that. Like, how, where does one elect? Does one elect at the end, or do they decide when they're 59 <laughs> or what? Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. Like, uh, you know, if if you want, you know, say, look, I'm I'm really interested in like third noble truth cessation. And I, you know, I, I'm really interested in not taking rebirth. Then uh, what do I do? Yeah, it's a fascinating question. And I, I noticed that I think I want to come back, but I think it's out of ego and resistance of impermanence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and not some really authentic judgment of my value proposition to the rest of humanity or what have you. Yeah, that, I'm glad you're looking at it. We have to look at that, like really, you know, is it, you know, is it, how much ego involvement is back like, I re, you know, like I'm really gonna make a difference. So we always have to look like, well, maybe we will make a difference, but also maybe it won't be a good difference. And, you know, like, uh, you know, and maybe we get real controlling about it. So would it be okay if, you know, we just say, um, yeah, I don't want to come back.
<clears throat> I'm just wondering if you would say yes if you were going to Hell Realm. Can we still be as Bodhisattvas? Yeah, I can draw raw. Um, well, one reason in Lam Rim, traditionally, Lamas would teach the realms and spend lots of times on the cold and hot hells and pray does, you know, hungry ghosts is so people really, uh, you know, get the idea of renunciation and get that before they get, you know, just say uh, Bodhisattva practice or Buddhahood. Like, I just, you know, I'm okay with really just stopping the pain. I mean, when we're in a lot of physical pain, um, most people just go, I just want the pain to stop. They're not going to say, you know, I really want to feel, they do say, I want to really feel good again. But if you had said, uh, like, we, we can stop the pain, uh, but you can't say you have to feel good again. That's a contract you make with, you know, Satan or something. Wouldn't you just say, yeah, I, I don't care if I feel good again. I just want to stop the pain. I mean, wouldn't most people say that? No, I no? talk to people about death every yeah. day. No, they don't. They would just say, I want to feel good again. They don't want to die. Seriously. They don't want to die. Okay. Um, are, we, are we still going here? Yeah. Okay. That was a little rupture in the forest there. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, you know, looking at the 12 links, now what? You have some online. You have Dirk online. The oh, okay. Online. Dirk's waving. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll take... We'll take an online comment. That would be great. Question. Uh, well, uh, this all of this talk, I've been thinking of the same thing since you talked about fire, and it fits with this to me, because I've never really felt that this personality is what would come back. Uh, but uh, so this personality. So when you when you talked about the fire stops, where does it go? The yeah. fire, fire, fire is a process that only continues when certain conditions are there to, 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 to have it continue. There's no, there's not, not nothing you can just grab hold of and say, this is the fire. Yeah. The, the mm -hmm. fire that we talk about is the fire doesn't ever actually exist. So this, just like a river, the, ri the river is not the same water all the time. It's different water all the time. So there's not really something that's there that you can grab a hold of that's a river. And I, I feel it's the same thing with uh, the personality and rebirth. I mean, is, is it, I'm going to come back and go, hi, I'm Dirk, and I'm just much of an asshole as I was in my previous life. No, that's, I don't think it works that way. Anyway, what do you think? <laughs> Uh, you bring out a good point because usually when we were talking about bodhisattva practice, um, we're very much in the relative world and kind of assuming that our personality is going to kind of go along. Um, but we will be a totally different person. We won't know, even know who we are. So um, the, the self that um, the misperceived self hopefully it's going to disappear anyway, right? In the Bardo or something, <laughs> but it can, it can keep going. But um, yeah, usually when we think we're taking rebirth, we, we tend to think like the me that we're experiencing in the room right now, right? But that's not going to happen. Please use the microphone. <clears throat> That's why your question at the beginning is if you wanted to, do you want to take rebirth, what was it, and come back as have the same life? That was yeah, it. And right. that just didn't, I didn't, that right. was, didn't make any sense. I mean, that just can't be. Because you're assuming that, again, <clears throat> personality and there is none. So you can't come back and have the same life. Yeah, I agree. You can't come back and have the same life. It's more like, are we willing to say yes to this life? So it's a bit more like, just psychologically, we, we do it all over again. But yeah, we can't do it all over again. Apologies to Nietzsche. You know, I don't think we can do it. <laughs> I think I think we might do something that's kind of similar, definitely 
the Buddha talked and various teachers like, you know, having a very similar thing. <clears throat> but nothing's, um, uh, you know, when we're talking about birth as, uh, as one of the links, we, we really have to be asking, uh, going into depth, like, well, what's being reborn? Uh, you know, not just assume that we know what's being reborn. So that's, that's why, you know, looking at things from uh, a motivational point of view, looking at things from an Abhidharma kind of psychological point of view, looking at things from the nature of mind you know, point of view. <clears throat> um, so it's interesting talking to, um, um, you know, different uh, people over the years, you know, sometimes talking to talkers or something. Uh, so I'm nosy. It's a good um, part of therapist training too. Like, hey, you know, um, do you feel like you're the ninth so-and-so or the 12th so-and-so or the fifth so-and-so? Do you have any, you know, sense of, yeah, I was that person? Guess what the resounding answer has been? Yeah, no, no, they just told me, you know, like, hey, you know, the Karmapa or the Dalai Lama or Taisitu Rameshe or some other person said, oh, yeah, you're the blah, blah. And then they start calling you that. And then just like they start calling us by our own names, like, this is your dad, this is your mom. And we go, oh, okay, I guess so, you know, like that. But uh, only very rarely do, do people you know, kind of, uh, you know, that someday, sometimes they talk about kids, you know, that talk about like, hey, this is where I'm living and I want to go so-and-so, but generally it's adult, you know, not. So it's, it's going to be totally different. So what's, you know, who cares then, right? Anyway, question. Uh, Lama, sorry, there's actually a couple online questions from Ashley. Uh, I don't know if Ashley wants to uh, chime in uh, verbally. Hoping she does. She's oh, hi. I, I, I had trouble pressing on mute. Um, hi, Lamla. Uh, yeah, so my question was, uh, can we, so are, you, are you saying that we can temporarily put off rebirth? It, like at least with the motivation that we don't want to cause further harm, but maybe not yet. Like if we haven't attained the level of mind of bodhisattva yet? Uh, like temporarily, I mean, go yeah. somewhere else. Well, I think you, ha you made a comment that kind of made me, um, yeah, question this because I didn't know, like it almost sounded like you're saying like we could, we could, with the motivation of like, I just don't want to cause further harm, whether it's just to myself or others, um, you know, we could do that with that motivation and, you know, and not take rebirth. And then I think you said something like, it sounded like you could do that at least temporarily. Is that true? Well, there are um, instances in Vajan tradition, particularly in Tibet where, you know, um, uh there's not like immediate like someone's you know like oh that person was so and so back in the 14th century and you know now they're so and so so we're thinking well where did 600 years go or something but, but you know they're doing something else i don't know so they're in you know i don't know if that means they changed their motivation or not i do want to point out that it's very useful though to and looking at this issue birth, uh, you know, whatever uh, is to really think like fire, like the fuel is out, where did the fire go? So it's not like there was a little ember kept, you know, and then we kind of Olympic torch <laughs> ran it over somewhere. No, that the fire went out because you didn't need it anymore. You know, it's like, okay. You're on. Uh, okay. It's on. Oh. 
Um, I was wondering in all of this, is it helpful to really kind of understand our karma and, you know, try to, I mean, because we have like this eons of karma that come with us mm. into each of these lives. And so when you said, oh, do you want the same life again? I'm like, well, I hope I burned through enough bad karma this life that it, maybe my next one won't be bad. And, mm -hmm. and so, you know, how, is it helpful to, and, and can we try and understand our own karma? And will that help us, you know, as we're making, you know, making these decisions about our actions and things like that? <clears throat> so the question is, well, how can, can we study our own karma or can we learn about our own karma with our mind stream and and use that to help us in in these you know in the 12 links you're you're making the decisions all the time when right. you make these actions right. so if we really did that in the context of our own karma you know can we can we learn that can we include that yeah you know, we have to or we're screwed i mean yes and a short answer um but in and um looking at the tradition of the path as a whole um you know it, it our situation is that was going to be ironic you know we're, we're talking about beings ourselves that need to be liberated and accumulate karma and at the same time um that's all relative truth from absolute point of view, we're not going to be able to find a person or a being. Oh, you mean saying my karma? Or even saying my. Like, ultimate awareness, emptiness doesn't have any ownership. No one owns it. You know, you can't say, well, my awareness. I mean, we say it, but, you know, we can't say my awareness, right? It's, it's just the open, the commons. You know, so then you go down the rabbit hole trying to separate out things, which isn't real anyway. Well, you know, it's it's real that we're sitting in a room that defines a certain space so we can use it, but we really haven't chopped up space, right? But it's it's hard to keep those two phenomena the uh in you know in awareness because it it looks like there's either open space where we think, I don't know, the sky or outer space, and then this enclosed space where it looks like we are able to, you know, um, put walls around space, right? But actually, they're both kind of happening at the same time. We are creating certain definitions that have functionality, and at the same time, um, uh, the, there's no really enclosed space. If it was easy, everybody would do this. <laughs> so hopefully, we're, uh, I'm hoping we all become Buddhists so we see the absolute and conventional natures uh, simultaneously. There was somebody else. Um, in virtual land, I don't know. So I always find it in, uh, interesting, you know, Doug in a moment, like um, probably one of the most recent, uh, uh, you know, greatest uh, Nima practitioners, Mipam, I was very much a Dzogchen practitioner at the same time was willing to, you know, say, okay, let, let, let's take on these Abhidharma questions, right? Let, let's, let's see if um, we can um, do Abhidharma from, uh, an, you know, kind of Dzogchen perspective, right? Let's see if we can, uh, you know, uh, even do Madhyamaka from Dzogchen perspective. So, um, uh, maybe after for those intrepid souls that actually finish all the assigned texts, uh, 
<laughs> the Vidadharma study program, maybe we'll look at that because it doesn't make sense to read Mipam until you have an idea of, uh, you know, what he's addressing, right? Otherwise, you just say, well, that sounds good. Okay, that's the truth, but you don't know the context. So it's very difficult. Um, it takes works of genius to try to um, really articulate philosophically, let alone a life where we really are uh, balanced, uh, you know, where we realize we're nobody and at the same time we're willing to raise our hand if somebody calls our name to, you know, go grab lunch at the co-op, you know. <laughs> we're almost over now, so I... Uh, Maybe some people are going, great, I don't have to take rebirth now. It's been a big deal. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doug, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how does this relate to going to the Pure Lands? Can they be like Bodhisattva finishing school so we can come back? <laughs> Yeah, so um, one way of looking at Pure Lands is their Bodhisattva finishing schools, uh, uh, either existing here right now or existing in uh, another realm. So, um, you know, from the very start of Dharma and before Buddha, Buddha Dharma, I mean, there's the acceptance of, of different realms of being of consciousness of um existence so that's one big difference between kind of traditional dharma and maybe what i would say secular humanist dharma a la stephen bachelor or somebody that generally secular humanist dharma or science like there's really just one reality i mean if you start to i don't know maybe People scientifically are talking about alternative realities, but um, definitely in Dharma, we, we might say there's one reality in the sense of everything's uh, awareness, empty, open awareness, but they're definitely different peer lands in strange places like that. I don't know. Peer land sounds pretty good, don't you think? So, um, my own teacher wanted to, uh, for after died, he was dressed up in uh, Vajogini um, attire to go to Vajogini's Pure Land. It's interesting. So if you know that everything's ultimately awareness, there's no one doing anything, um, that means you can dress up and go to, right? Vajogini's Pure Land. Just like Nagarjuna said, because things have no inherent existence, then things can manifest, right? That's 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 Madhyamaka thinking. I think it's Mipam thinking too. Because things are empty, then uh, empty appearance, then things can happen. If everything is so solid, nothing can happen. If everything was real, nothing could happen. Patty, you can get in under the wire here. Please wait for the microphone. <clears throat> no, it's not on. I um, just what you were concluding your concluding remarks. I felt like this is a good conclusion, but I just you know <clears throat> with uh, His Holiness prayer that people here know is as long as passengers, as long as sentient beings remain. Until then, may I too remain to dispel the miseries of the world. That's a prayer we all know here. And, um, you know, when he's speaking about, until then, may I too remain. And it's uh, because I am such a beginner, I'm not quite certain about that. Like, what is the I, His Holiness, the I, that may he too, <laughs> you know, it's really, uh, I wonder if you could say something about that. Yeah, I appreciate that. So um, for me, that means like after the talk, um, you don't just immediately leave, you, you know, 
maybe you do a little mitzvah for the temple, <laughs> you do some dishes or something, right? So the thing, I always think really practically, everything in Dharma is actually practical. We have these deep discussions, but, you know, um, uh, may I remain means like, let's say you're doing work around the temple, then, you know, even if you're in a rush, you put away your tools correctly, right? <laughs> so you don't go, okay, I'm really in a rush, so I'll let someone else clean up, right? You, or you, even if you have to leave right away, then um, you, you know, you straighten out your cushion before you go, something like that. So when we say I remaining, it means you're creating, from my side, you're, you're creating the, you're, you're giving it a push, right? So if you give something a push, you don't have to keep pushing it, right? You push your, your go-kart, <laughs> you, know, you push it and it'll keep going, right? So that's enlightened activity, you know, Tara, like you, you can initiate things. It doesn't mean you have to keep like at it. So, you know, we come to this. So I really like it when people, you know, start thinking about, okay, so I'm coming to a talk, but, um, you know, what does it take to keep the lights on? And, you know, oh, I'm walking by the cottage. I know there's a crack developing in the 75 foot hose, you know? You know I'm, I'm always thinking that way, like what? Yeah, there is. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, you know, what are we going to do with the, you know, extra table in the kitchen? To, you know, I mean, that that's like, may I, you know, until the no sentient beings may I remain to help out. It just doesn't mean we're, you know, sitting here. So some members of the Sangha, like, get particularly annoyed and, you know, when, they're running around cleaning up and other people are just schmoozing, right? I get that, you know, like when I lived in Watt Avenue, even Lama and Watt Avenue, I'd be, um, <laughs> I'd be emptying the garbage or cleaning stuff up and people would be talking in the parking lot and um, uh, some of the guys, it was always men, honestly, not to diss us guys, but like, gosh, Lama, you are so cool. You empty the garbage too. Is that a guy thing to say? You know, instead of saying, hey, do you need some help emptying the garbage, right? You know, it's not such a guy thing, like, that's really cool, you, you're emptying your own garbage, you know? Um, or, <laughs> that's a guy, I, you know, it's like, oh, neat, okay, well. Um, but, you know, we, we can, you know, we can help out, that's playing it forward, right? So I know everybody in this room is interested in that, like, okay, well, um, so we don't have to remain, through our personality or physically to remain, you know? So that's why, you know, particularly the, the Buddha said, well, you know, I actually don't need to be around. You have the Dharma. Such a relief, you know? I don't have to, you know, it's like, okay, you know, okay, now I got to take rebirth, keep helping people forever, even though I don't like them, even though I should like them. You know, it gets, it's really a drag, you know? So you can say, I've, I started a ball rolling and, uh, you know, then, then that, that's the Dharma. No, so we're planting seeds, right? You know, we're always thinking, that's why they say, think seven lifetimes ahead. It's just kind of a trope for like, you know, just kind of think that you're playing stuff forward. You don't always have to haunt the place and, you know, like that. So we have new shades, of awnings on the side, isn't that pretty? That's, you know, we had donors for that. and. So now we have to probably get a new flooring for the cottage, you know, and the, you know, the good news is there's always something, right? From a samsaric point of view, we think, God, there's always something. Um, but from Bodhisattva hand, we go, there's always something. And then also from Bodhisattva point of view, like, or individual liberation, I'm always thinking, well, I asked for this. We, didn't we all ask for it? We asked for it, you know? So, you know, kind of, right, when I think things through, I said, well, I asked for it. I got it. <laughs> Wife, kids, right? Full catastrophe.
husband, kids, you know, whatever, whatever thing we have, too many pets, I mean, you know, we ask for it. Okay, so we need to do a closing. Do the merits of these virtuous the actions. actions. May I quickly attain and the state, state of a Guru, Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Shinrinzing Tianzing Gatsu, please remain until Samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all the migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Ablo Kitshavara, great treasure of objectless compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Lo Songdrapa, I make request at your holy feet.